A few months ago, we focused heavily on a huge problem happening over on TikTok with beauty influencers. For some reason, creators over on TikTok don't seem to think that FTC rules apply to them, and they've been using some really sneaky methods of concealing their relationships with brands that they're being paid by. Some of the biggest offenders were Michaela, Glamzilla, and even Nikki Tutorials. Ever since Lashgate happened, more and more people have been clued into the tricks these influencers use to be deceptive, and for months now, viewers have been calling them out. We haven't talked about this in over a month because honestly, there's only so many times you can talk about this before it's like, okay, they're never gonna learn. But I thought we could revisit some of their recent sponsorships and talk about what changes they've made, if any, and if these influencers are learning. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Let's start off with Michaela. I haven't really been paying attention to Michaela lately until she was put all over my For You page for her Kim Kardashian Met Gala look. This video from Michaela is literally going viral right now, but not because of the makeup tutorial. It's going viral for the way Michaela said Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian had this absolutely stunning, sexy look at the Met Gala, and you can recreate it at home. And everyone is stitching her video and giving their own take on Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian! 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 A lot of people are saying that Michaela is exaggerating her accent heavily, most likely to appeal to the algorithm. <laughs> people keep asking me, is that actually how I say Kim Kardashian? No, I don't say Kim Kardashian. I just say that in the beginning to make you watch it and to make you care. And it clearly works. <laughs> I'm just being obnoxious and annoying. And yeah, it angers people, but like... The video has like, what, 12 million views and it's been used like a billion times. And I mean, it's clearly working. The video has over 10 million views and everyone is talking about it. Another thing people are talking about is Michaela's lack of disclosure in her sponsorships. She's still not giving any verbal disclosure, there's no disclosure on the screen, so if people were to save the video and repost it on a different platform, no one would know it's sponsored. Well, here's the secret to clearer, smoother, more radiant skin literally overnight. This is retinol, and this is Rock's Retinol Correction Night Serum Capsules. If you're a beginner to retinol, this is where you should start. Say you have an event tomorrow, and you need your skin to look better overnight, do your skincare routine, and get your capsule. My two favorite things about this, non-irritating. So if you have sensitive skin, it's great. Also, it is the perfect amount in every capsule. You're not gonna use too much retinol. That can happen a lot. Open up the capsule. Before bed, apply the retinol, and when you wake up in the morning, your skin is gonna be just glowing. Over time, this is gonna firm the skin. It's gonna hydrate and look at the immediate radiance. This is gonna sit overnight, and I'm gonna show you my skin in the morning. And her only disclosure is hidden in the hashtag with hashtag ROC partner. There is that tiny paid partnership banner, but that's usually automatically put on there by TikTok. I just think if someone has to actually ask you whether or not your video is sponsored, there's probably an issue. Tons of people are also calling Michaela out for being a bit deceptive with this sponsorship. The video was for a retinol cream, and Michaela made it look like it was an overnight results type of product. And people in the comments are like, that's not how it works. Reading, retinol isn't an overnight fix though. It takes weeks to see any results. If anything, you'd wake up with drier skin. Trying to convince us a capsule will improve our skin overnight is just ridiculous. You've become such a sellout. If it's pure retinol, your skin needs to go through a retinalization process for eight weeks. And other people think if Michaela is going to be paid by a brand to sell this product to people, she should let people know how to safely use it. One person said, Okay, but she didn't say that retinol thins your skin, and if you don't wear sunscreen, you can get burns. 
And apparently, that's very true. Many articles claim it's crucial to use sunscreen with your retinol, so maybe that's something Michaela should have included in her ad. All in all, it looks like Michaela hasn't learned from Lashgate when it comes to proper disclosure. Speaking of proper disclosure, I want to thank Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video. You guys know Adam and Eve have been a longtime supporter of my channel, and they're once again giving you guys a discount code. Code SPILL is going to get you 50% off of one item in your cart and free shipping to anywhere in the US or Canada. Some exclusions do apply. Just for a reminder, whenever you shop with Adam and Eve, you're going to get 24-7 customer support, 90-day hassle-free returns, and the main thing I really love about Adam and Eve is they donate 15% of their profit to help fight the spread of HIV. So that's code SPILL for 50% off of one item in your cart and free shipping to the US and Canada. Thank you Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to this tea. The next person we have to talk about is Glamzilla. Glanzilla never properly discloses her sponsorships, she's overly positive about every single product, and many people think even if she's not sponsored, she's always fishing for a sponsorship. A few months ago, Manny MUA exposed the fact that a lot of influencers post these super positive reviews in hopes that the brand reaches out and asks for their video to be bought and turned into an ad. Unfortunately, Glamzilla hasn't really changed her ways despite people leaving comments about her lack of transparency with sponsorships. I actually think Glamzilla might have gotten a little bit worse with her disclosures. A few weeks ago, Glamzilla posted what seemed to be a storytime video about how she went to Sephora during their spring sale. She put Olaplex into her basket and her boyfriend tried to take it out. I took my man with me to Sephora and it was a big mistake. As you know, it's the most important time of the year for us. It's the Sephora spring savings event. Okay, let me tell you what this guy started doing. He started policing what I put in my cart. Excuse me, sir. Okay. So he points to this and he said, you have this at home in both our bathrooms. You don't need another one. And then he, he, he took it out of my cart. Rude. So I said, you know what? You're right, babe. I took it out. You know what I did after? I put every single Olaplex product in my cart and he shut the heck up and as you could tell I put this one back into don't play with me and don't ever play with a homie Olaplex if you were just watching this video without looking at the description you would have no idea that this was an ad it's not until you press more and all the way at the bottom it's hidden with a hashtag ad if you were just watching this, you'd probably be like, oh, she just loves her Olaplex and not even know that she's being paid to love it. I do want to bring up something really nice that I saw Glamzilla do that I think is worth mentioning. We talk a lot about the bad things these influencers do, but when I saw what Glamzilla did a few weeks ago, I think it was such a great idea and I hope more influencers take notes here. I'm sure you guys know all about those huge giveaways influencers do with their leftover PR and unwanted products. They always host these huge Instagram giveaways with these pictures full of products. They tell you to take a friend to enter and they gain hundreds of thousands of followers. Well, Glamzilla decided to do something a bit different with her unwanted products. This is what $50,000 worth of beauty products looks like and we're donating everything. So as you know, I'm not one of those beauty girlies that do giveaways every month because I don't believe in them. But what I do believe in is actually making positive change in our communities. I create these beauty mystery bags. They're filled with the latest and greatest in beauty. Like, there's some good stuff in here. Seriously, you get your money's worth. And then we donate all the proceeds to our community. Last year, we actually raised $10,000 and donated it directly to the Red Door Family Shelter. This year, I've committed to funding an entire school's nutrition program for the whole school year, meaning kindergartners are gonna get free snack and the kids are gonna be able to get free breakfast club every morning. On top of that, we're also funding 15 low-income families with meals throughout the entire year. And I made it fun. So we're gonna host some pizza parties so the kids can eat pizza for free. And then, oh, we're, we're, we're making a new library. That's like so special. And then we're making a school garden. A school garden so the kids can plant the vegetables and then pluck them and eat them. 
So yeah, it's gonna be an amazing next couple of months. I'm gonna take you guys along with me every step of the way. I can't wait to drop the books off. I can't wait for the pizza party. I'm gonna wear a hairnet. Um, I'm just so happy. Thank you for being along with me on this journey and doing good through beauty. Do this mascara for you, mascara for you, mascara for you. My girlfriends came to help. We're filling in the bags one by one. Like we're hooking everybody up. So we're basically just making sure all of the bags are packed. I know this is more than $500, but I just want all of you to be happy. We've built all of the mystery bags. And I noticed that this one bag is a little empty. That bag is getting the entire new face system. I'm so excited. And that's it. I'll see you on the weekend when we finally meet up to give everyone their bags. Love ya! And she's even been documenting the ways it's paying off. She ended up buying a local Toronto school, all the books they wanted, and they had a pizza party. Today, I did a little bit of good. I'm from Toronto, and I chose three schools in the GTA to give back to this year. And we're starting off with Chester Elementary Public School. We asked the school for their ultimate dream book wish list, and we donated every single book on that list and more to the library. I ended up logging the books into the system, and I even got to read to the kids too. But... As you know, that was not it. We threw the entire school a pizza party. The kids went wild. But the best part about it was sitting down at the end of the day and watching the kids actually read the books we donated. I think I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Someone commented on one of her videos and claimed it was just one big tax write-off, which even if it was, at least it's still doing good. But Glamzilla claims it's actually not, writing, I proudly have never claimed any of the $75,000 we have raised in the last seven years as a tax write-off. I don't do it for that. I actually do it to do good. The next person we have to talk about is Nikki Tutorials. And you guessed it. She hasn't gotten any better with her disclosures. Nikki's most recent sponsorship was with Juvia's Place, and once again, no verbal, no written, and no overlay disclosure. I just found the most pigmented liquid blush in the world. Like, I'm not kidding, just watch. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> you guys know I am a Juvia's Place stan. A couple of months ago, they came out with the blush rouge. Obsessed with this, but now, liquid blush and these are so pigmented okay before we get to play quickly let me apply some foundation but look at the colors such fun color i one two ah. oh Whew. okay that is just oh this combo might be it juvia's place you just you just get it you just you just always get it I am so obsessed. I am so obsessed. The only place you can find out if it's an ad is buried within her hashtags and TikTok put up that paid partnership banner. Nikki is the one I'm actually most surprised about because she took her sponsorship disclosure really seriously on YouTube. After she got called out a few years back, she came up with this whole disclosure system where she'd mark at the beginning of a video if it was sponsored and she made it really clear if it was gifted or if she had a code or if she was just being paid. Even Nikki fans are calling her out on this too with one person writing, of course you're gonna say you're obsessed, you're sponsored. Wish you and Juvia's Place would be more clear and put ad, not just partner, in the hashtag. Another influencer that's starting to not disclose properly is actually someone that kind of shocked me. Alex Earl was once pretty good with making sure people knew when she was sponsored or not, but as time has gone on, she's no longer making sure that she does things properly. Alex did a sponsored post for the L'Oreal Paris bonding treatment, and not only is there no disclosure on the screen or in the video, but she didn't even include that paid partnership banner from TikTok. The only place she put any kind of disclosure was buried with a bunch of hashtags. I'm gonna show you guys how I got my hair to go from this, looking dry and frizzy, to this. Those pictures were from this morning. If you know me, you know I'm constantly in the salon and I'm bleaching my hair off. I found a bond repair dupe. This way you can get healthy hair without breaking the bank. This is L'Oreal's pre-shampoo, so I'm gonna show you how I used it. So you damp your hair and then you put it in for like five to 10 minutes before you shampoo. The products I use in my hair make such a difference. Like, I can tell if I use something I like and it's good, my hair feels, like, silky smooth. And if I don't, it feels like straw. This is after I used it. Like, woo! This is the full set of their bond strengthening products. So if you need a good bond repair dupe, 
I got you. And all her comments are filled with people being like, is this an ad? And asking her if it's sponsored and pointing out that it doesn't say whether or not it is. I know a lot of people probably don't care and think that you should just be smart enough to not trust influencers, but I think that's actually so sad. If you grew up with the beauty YouTubers, then you know there were always a handful of some that you couldn't trust. But the ones who were honest and built trust with their audience went the furthest in their industry, and it's weird to see so many TikTok beauty influencers not really care about building that trust. Everything feels so transactional and really impersonal. I just can't understand why they're going to such great lengths to hide their sponsorships. If they were just honest, more people would appreciate that and be happy that they're growing and getting to work with brands. Seeing so many big creators try to hide it makes you think that they're not trustworthy and not take anything they recommend seriously. I think Lashgate really opened people's eyes to all of this because I have been seeing more people than ever before call these things out in influencers' comment sections, but for some reason, they're still ignoring it. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. Do you think these influencers are trying to be deceptive and hide their affiliations? Or do you think they genuinely don't know how to disclose properly? Let me know and I'll see you next time.